Again, welcome to DSRT 734 class. This lecture has covered the measures of central tendency, which was covered in chapter three of our course textbook. So our main objective is to learn how to determine the mean, media, and mode of a population and also of a sample. Now, the measures of a central tendency is the value that represents a typical or a central entry of a data set. And the most common measures of central tendency are the mean, median, and mode. So we start with the mean, which is also called the average. Now to find the mean, it will be the sum of all the data entries divided by the number of entries. So here we have a sigma notation, which represent the sum of all the data entries. Or we say the data entries are the X. We had all of the data entries X in a data set. <clears throat> So to find the population mean, which represent the mu, it will be the sum of all the data entries in the data set divided by the population size. The population size is represent as uppercase N. And also to find the sample mean, it will be the X bar, which is equal to the sum of all the data entries divided by the sample size. The sample size represents lowercase n. So let's see an example here. The example here said we should find the sample mean. So the prices in dollars for a sample of round trip flights from Chicago, Illinois to Cancun, Mexico are listed. What is the mean price of the flights? So here we have 872-432-397-427-388-782-392. Now to find the mean price of the flight, we need to add all the flights and divide it by the number of the flight prices. So we have to add all the values. So here we had all the values, we get 3695 then we are going to divide by the number of flight prices. In this case, it's seven. So 3695 divided by seven. So the mean will be $527.90. So again, to find the sample mean, we had all the flight prices, then we divide by the number of flight prices. So in this case, the sample size will be the number of flight prices we have. Next is the media. Now the media is the value that lies in the middle of the data when the data set is in order or is sorted. The sorted will be in ascending order. So it will measure the center of an ordered data set by dividing it into two equal parts. Now, if the data set has an odd number of entries, and then the media will be the middle data entry. So for example, if the data set are seven, then we are going to have only one middle value, which will be the media, will be the fourth value. Now, if it's even number of entries, then the media is the mean of the two middle values. So if I have, for example, the data set is eight, I cannot have only one middle value to be two. So we are going to take the two middle values then find the average of it. So now let's see an example. So here we have the same example. We are going to, this time we are going to find the media of the fright prices. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven fright prices. So this means our media will be one middle value. But the first thing we need to do is to sort the prices in ascending order. We are going to put it in order from increasing. So from 872, 432, 397, 427, 388, 782, 397. When we put it in order, the smallest price is 388, 397, 397, 427, 432, 782, 872. So now the prices are in, in order, increasing order. So the middle value will be 427. 
since we have seven entries, which is an odd number, the media is the middle value, or in this case, will be the fourth value, which is again, four to seven. So the media price of the fright is four to seven. Now, what's the difference between the mean and the media? Uh, in the mean, if we have a very small value or a very large value, which we call the outline values, it will affect the mean price. But the media, if we have a very small value or a very large value, it doesn't affect the media. So that's why, for example, in economics or in the labor market, we normally don't say the average salary of uh, adults in New York City is this amount. Because what will happen? In New York City, we have the Wall Street and employees that make six-figure, even seven-figure salaries a year. The majority of the New York workers do not work in the Wall Street. So most likely they even make five-figure salary. So because the Wall Street employees higher salary, the average salary in New York City will go very high. But here we want to deal with the majority. So in economics or labor market, we are going to say the media salary of employees in New York City is so smart. And that will be the correct measurement. So in short, we will say that the media is very robust to outline values like small or very large values is very robust. But mean is not. The mean value always, the outline values again affect it. So the next example here, we have six. So this means we have a even numbers. We have six flight prices. So to find the media, the first thing we're going to do again is to put the data in order. But this time we are going to take a two middle values and then we find the average of it. So the two middle values here will be 397 plus 427 divided by two. And that gives us 412. Next is how do we find the mode? And the mode is the data entry that occurs with the greatest frequency, the highest tally. So if there's no entry or if no entry is repeated, then we don't have no mode. What mean, we mean is that if we have a data set and all the values are only once, comes only once, then there's no mode. Or sometimes we may have more than one, but there are two different data that have the same amount of frequency or the total tally are the same. In this case, we may have a bimodal. So if two entries occur with the same greatest frequency, then each entry is a mode. In this case, we say by modal. So let's see an example here. Here we have 872-432-397-427-388-782-397. So it seems the, mean, the mode will be 397 because 397 occurs twice. So the entry of 397 occurs twice, whereas the other entries occur only once. So again, our mode will be 397. Next, let's find the mode, another example here. Here we have a, a political debate and a sample of audience members was asked to name the political party to which they belong. Their responses are shown in the table here. What is the mode of the responses? So here we have a Democrat, we have 34, Republican, 56, order is 21, and do not respond is nine. So we know the mode will be the highest, again, frequency. So the answer will be Republican. So the mode is Republican because, again, the response occur with the greatest frequency. So in this sample, there were more Republicans than people of any other single affiliation. Now, comparing the mean, median mode, here we say all the three measures describe a typical entry of a data set, which is the middle. Now, advantage of using the mean is that the mean is a re reliable measure because it takes into account every entry of the data set. 
So that's why, again, a very small or a very large value affect the main value. So the disadvantage of using the main is that it greatly affected by outliers. So again, outliers are values that are very, very small compared to majority of the values or very large compared to majority of the values. So here we see a data entry that is far removed from other entries in the data set. So for example, here they say we should find the mean media mode of a sample ages of a class shown. Which measure of central tendency best describe a typical entry of this data set? Are there any outliers? So when we look at this data, we can see that 65 is an outline because majority of the data ages is from 20 to 24. So 65 is too big. So first let's find the mean. To find the mean, we are going to add all the values, then we divide by the number of students. In this case is 20. Our answer is 23.8. Now let's find the media. To find the media, we are going to put the data in order. Since we have 20, it means we are going to have a two middle values. So the two middle values will be 21 plus 22 divided by two, and that gives us 21.5. Now the mode will be the value with the, or the age with the highest frequency. In this case, it's 20. Now, when we look, we can see that the mean is greater than the media. And the main reason is that because we have a very large value, which is 65 years, and that affected the mean. Now, if we, like, we have a very small value, let's say two years, and we don't, we don't have no 65, then we will see that the media will be greater than the mean. So here we say that the mean takes every entry into account, but is influenced by the outline of 65. And also the media takes every entry, every entry into account and is not affected by the outline. So in this case, the mode exists, but it doesn't appear to represent a typical entry. So again, sometimes also a graphical comparison can help us decide which measure of central, central tendency best represents a data set. So here we can see in this case, it appears that the media best describe the data set. So we, in this case, we are using the frequency distribution table. We can see where 65 is very small, only one best student. Then we can see the 20 students, 25 and etc. And we find our median value was somewhere right here and our mean is here. We can see that the mean is very big. The reason why the mean is so big and uh, the stand here is because of the outline data. So in this case, based on the graph here, we'll say that the media is best represented because again, here the mean and media and mode is telling us the central tendency of the data. So by looking at the graph, we can see media is somewhere in the center than the mean. So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. Again, these lectures, we went through the concept of measuring the central tendency of a data set, how to find the mean, the mode, and also the media. Thank you. See you in the next class.